I'm Eugenie Scott. I'm the Executive Director of the National Center for Science Education. We're in Oakland, California. We're a membership organization. Most of our members are scientists, teachers, people concerned about church and state separation. We monitor the creationism and evolution controversy, and we try to help teachers and school boards and legislatures and citizens to cope with pressures against the teaching of evolution. So uh, in the 25 years or so that we've been doing this, we have found that there are three arguments that pretty much any creationist um, contention can be put into. If it's a video or a letter to the editor or a comment on a talk show, whatever, it'll pretty much fall into one of these three categories. And we call them the pillars of creationism. I'd like to tell you a little bit about the pillars and why they're important to recognize because you as a scientist or a citizen who enjoys science, who is interested in science, I hope is concerned about what's going on in American public schools and the science classes there. Because at NCSE, we hear a lot about pressures from school boards upon curriculum. We hear pressures upon individual teachers from parents. We hear about pressures from school boards or state legislatures that trickle down to the classroom teacher as well. And in all of these cases, uh, there's, there's been this continuing story for over 30 years of people who don't want kids to learn evolution. And even though the, there have been various ins and outs of the uh, creation and evolution controversy, and the creationists have always lost in court, this is an evolving target because creationism morphs, shall we say, in response to the legal environment. There's natural selection going on here. And we have different forms of creationism, and the current form of creationism that we're coping with, that we're monitoring at NCSE today, is perhaps the most difficult to fight because it doesn't appear to be the kind of thing you can challenge directly in court. At any rate, I'll get to that in a moment. So let me tell you about the pillars of creationism because as a concerned citizen, as a scientist, I hope you'd be able to recognize them and understand the refutations of the pillars so that you can hopefully contribute to your own community or state and help to improve science education. The first pillar is the pillar which challenges the science of evolution. The claim is often made that evolution is a theory in crisis, that scientists are giving up on evolution, that more and more scientists are rejecting evolution as a failed theory. Uh, that will come as a surprise to scientists. But this is the claim that is made, and it's made very, very loudly on talk radios, on blogs, on letters to the editor, and so forth. The second pillar of creationism is an ideological pillar. It's the religious ideology that evolution is incompatible with my religious views, therefore evolution cannot be true. And this takes various forms. Uh, the strongest form is if an individual is a biblical literalist, or a Quranic literalist. Um, this, this point of view is present in conservative Christians, conservative Muslims, and conservative Jews, um, the Middle Eastern monotheisms, if you will. The argument is made that um, my holy books, uh, when I look at them, I see special creation. God created everything specially in its present form over a short period of time 6,000 years ago. Therefore, evolution cannot be true. And indeed, evolution is incompatible with that particular religious view. Uh, some people reject evolution because of a human exceptionalism perspective, that, that human beings are so superior to all other organisms, God must have created us specially. Uh, there's a lot of ways that, that religion um, is used to oppose the teaching of evolution. The third pillar is the fairness pillar. The, it's a cultural concept, really. It's a pillar where the anti-evolutionists are tapping into some very deeply held American cultural positions. Uh, fairness, balance, free speech, um, uh, letting everybody speak, uh, you know, town hall meetings, all that sort of thing. And, and these are really great cultural values, and there's nothing wrong with them. Uh, it's just that they are misapplied, shall we say, when it comes to how we decide what a kid should learn in school. Now, how can you, as a concerned citizen, deal with these three pillars? Um, as I say, whatever argument you hear, you can probably fit it into one of these three. So if I can just give you the generic refutations, then you can go from there. 
Uh, there's plenty of evidence for uh, uh, the particulars on various websites, on NCSE's websites and others. The um, evolution is weak science pillar. Let's take a look at that first. Well, the best way to refute that is to help your audience, help the person you're talking to, understand that, in fact, the consensus in the scientific community supporting the idea that evolution has happened, the universe is old, etc., is enormously strong. There have been many surveys of scientists. There's been a lot of survey research of scientists showing uh, upwards of the high 90% of scientists accept the idea of evolution. Uh, it's hard to get scientists to agree on whether it's raining outside, but there's this really, really strong uh, acceptance, uh, consensus view that evolution is valid science. But the public doesn't know this. In the few uh, surveys that have been done where the members of the public have been asked, you know, do you think scientists agree that evolution has happened? The difference between uh, what the public thinks scientists believe and what scientists actually believe is like 20, 30 percent. It's, it's really a big disconnect. So help the public understand that evolution is valid science. The second pillar, the uh, religion pillar, is best dealt with by helping people understand that there's a very wide diversity of opinion within the Christian community. Um, I often joke that um, I think more evolution is taught in Catholic parochial schools than in public schools because the Catholic Church accepts something called theistic evolution, which is, of course, evolution happened, but it was the God way that God chose to bring about the world according to his plan. There's varieties of theistic evolution out there, but it's basically an idea. It's a Christian theological idea that is fully compatible with what science shows us about living things evolving through time. Um, Catholics, mainstream Protestants' official uh, theology is, in fact, theistic evolution. So it is not the case that if you are a Christian, you have to reject evolution. Some Christian views, absolutely, but not all Christian views. Most people think there's a dichotomy. On one side is atheist evolution, on the other side is Christian creationism, but that's false. That's just empirically wrong. It's not a dichotomy, it's a continuum. The third pillar, the um, uh, fairness pillar, is uh, the most difficult one to deal with because it is so strongly rooted in American cultural traditions. The fairness pillar is best dealt with by helping the public think about this a little bit more, more carefully. Uh, obviously, we want debate in our society about a lot of things. People should be free to express, express opinions. People should be free to uh, argue vehemently about one position or another, one opinion or another. But that's not really what we're talking about. What we're really talking about is a much more narrow issue. We're really talking about what do you teach in high school science class? Because that is where these policies that come to school boards or the pressure that comes upon teachers really come to. What you should teach in high school science class is, no surprise, science. And a high school science teacher has the very important job of picking from the huge array of subject matter in, say, biology or physics or chemistry or whatever, that smaller range of topics that is essential for young learners who are just building an understanding of that particular scientific field. In biology, that one of those core principles is evolution, that living things are related genetically in this, this huge genealogical tree of living creatures through time. So help the public understand that we're not talking about uh, inhibiting anybody's free speech. We're not talking about science being dogmatic and, and forcing views upon students. We're talking about doing the same thing in high school biology class as we do in physics or chemistry, or for that matter, mathematics and uh, English literature and um, geography. We teach the consensus view of the field. Now, if the creationists or the intelligent design people or anybody else who challenges evolution wants to uh, make the argument that they have a valid science that deserves to be taught in the public school classroom, knock yourself out. But your job is to convince the scientific community first. What is happening is that because of the politicized nature of American education, you know, curriculum decisions are made by elected officials, and elected officials are looking over their shoulder to votes as opposed to necessarily paying attention to what's you know, the, the best curriculum. 
because American education is politicized, there are pressures upon teachers outside of science to change the curriculum one, one way or the other. They should be protected from that. Students should not be the, the platform uh, upon which we fight the culture wars. Let the creationists or the intelligent design people or the anti-evolutionists demonstrate to the scientific community that they have valid views, that evolution is either weak science or that they've got a better alternative, and it'll trickle down to the high school if it makes it into the consensus. They argue fairness, frankly, to teach students that something is not uh, valid uh, when there's such a strong scientific consensus about it is the most unfair thing you can do. I would hope that being familiar with the refutations of the three pillars would give you more confidence in standing up for good science in your community. If you hear of a school board issue or some state legislation or school board legislation, or if you even hear word that one of your local teachers is reluctant to teach evolution because she or he feels that there is pressure from the community, I hope that you will stand up for good science. And the first thing you can do is contact us at ncse.com. We can put you in touch with people in your community who feel likewise. We can give you the ammunition, shall we say, uh, the arguments that you can use and the methods that you can use to make a good argument to your local decision makers. Because teachers need help. Uh, we're f we get calls every week from teachers who uh, want some advice, who want some support to teach good science. And they deserve all the support that we as scientists and concerned citizens can give them. Thank you.